Barrett's esophagus can it always lead to a cancer? Hello, I am Dr. Jitesh Rajpurohit. I am a surgical oncologist at Specialty Surgical Oncology at Mumbai. So we shall try to understand what Barrett's esophagus is, uh, how it develops, what are the pathophysiology, and uh, how can we diagnose uh, Barrett's esophagus, and what can be done to avoid, and once it has occurred, how it can be treated. So what are the risk factors of Barrett's esophagus? First, being a male gender increases your risk for developing a Barrett's esophagus. Second is smoke, history of smoking and alcoholic uh, on a chronic or a very long period of time, it can lead to a Barrett's esophagus. Third, being overweight can lead to Barrett's esophagus. GERD, which is a gastroesophageal reflux disease, can lead to Barrett's esophagus. And having a history of hiatal hernia can lead to a Barrett's esophagus. So what exactly is Barrett's esophagus? So normally uh, there is a junction between your esophagus and stomach which is we call it as a lower esophageal junction. So normally uh, the, the esophageal line, lining is different and your stomach lining is different because both of these has a different function. The stomach lining has a layer to protect itself from uh, gastric acids. So what happens is when you have food, your food goes into through your esophagus or what we call it as a food pipe into your stomach and the lower esophageal sphincter will contract so that your food doesn't go back into your esophagus. So this is the normal function of your lower esophageal sphincters. So when the food enters the stomach, the stomach will produce the acid which is required for your digestion of the food. Sometimes what happens is uh, when there is gastric uh, reflux, your lower esophageal sphincter is relaxed, uh, maybe because of your age or being a history of smoking or, or hiatal hernia, the lower esophageal sphincter becomes relaxed. Now what happens is your lower esophageal sphincter will be exposed to a gastric acid, which is not uh, supposed to be there in your esophagus. So to protect uh, esophageal lining, uh, the esophageal lining changes its normal uh, consistency from a normal uh, epithelial lining mucosa to a gastric mucosa. So this process is called as metaplasia. So now this metaplasia is not the normal location of where I mean the lower esophageal sphincter should be having a, a lining of esophagus but now it has a lining of stomach. So this part of the esophagus is called as metaplastic changes which is termed as Barrett's esophagus. So uh, what are the symptoms of Barrett's esophagus? First having a gastric reflux. You always have a sour uh, taste in your mouth after having uh, food or there is a change in voice which is very worrisome and uh, after uh, you have food you always tend to have a regurgitation in your esophagus and which causes irritation you always have fullness in your stomach these are the symptoms of uh, having a bad esophagus all these are subtle symptoms which are often neglected or uh, we don't uh, usually tend to notice the symptoms on a day-to-day -day life but over a period of time this can lead to a potentially hazardous complications. So how do you diagnose this uh, Barrett's esophagus? We usually follow in a medical terminology, it is called a CITL protocol, uh, in which uh, we do endoscopy. All those patients who have been having this long standing symptoms of gastric reflux, uh, and most of the patients uh, like who have symptoms of more than five to 10 years, we usually do an endoscopy and take random biopsies for one to two centimeters, around 10 biopsies are taken. This is called a CITL protocol uh, of endoscopy and once the biopsy report has come we can always know that uh, there is metaplastic changes which is termed as Barrett's esophagus. So what can be done to avoid this uh, Barrett's esophagus and once it has developed how, to do, how do we treat it? So there are, uh, we'll uh, try to understand it under two uh, different segments. One is the normal conservative management and the other one is the intervention management. So normal conservative management, we have two things. Uh, one is the medications, which will decrease your gastric uh, acid secretion so that the, the esophagus is not exposed to the ga higher gastric acid. The other thing is the diet modification. Diet modification, what we usually uh, recommend is to avoid chocolates, caffeines, and uh, spicy foods. Avoid smoking and drinking. All this can lead to increased acid reflux and acid secretion. Lose weight, have a healthy diet and healthy uh, routine to uh, lose weight uh, since uh, once your muscle tone has come back, your uh, lower esophageal sphincter will be in a, a good shape to tackle this acid reflux. Next, after you have food, you should not go to your bed uh, for at least two hours. 
you should be in a standing position or in a sitting position for at least 2 hours after you have food and all the medication has to be taken with plenty of oral fluids so all these things can uh, decrease your risk to have a bread esophagus or a gastric reflux in the medication we, uh, we usually provide a medication which will decrease your acid secretion the acid content is very low and the bread esophagus which uh, set in it can reverse over a period of time next uh, we go to the intervention part intervention part there are two parts uh, one is the endoscopic uh, interventions and the second is surgical intervention then endoscopic interventions uh, there are a few options what we usually provide one is photodynamic therapy what usually we do is we inject a chemical into your body which will increase your uh, photosensitivity and uh, the low resolution sphincter will be exposed to a ultraviolet radiation and which will burn the mucosa and reverse the changes once the new lining comes in uh, it would be a normally sufficient mucus second is called as endoscopic mucosal resection in which uh, we endoscopically remove entire uh, mucosa which is uh, changes its lining and the new muc uh, mucosa which will come will be normal next is the surgery in the surgical intervention what we usually do a process called as fundoplication and we bring your lower esophageal sphincter into the abdomen now uh, it is under uh, control phenomena and it is less exposed to the acid so if there are any queries uh, we will be uh, we are more than happy to help you out you can drop in a message in the comment box or you can reach to, uh, up to us uh, at our sso mumbai branch thank you